Hugging Face just released the Transformers agent this week, basically to use large language models to connect and execute Transformer models hosted on Hugging Face. If you're familiar with LangChain agents, Transformers agent looks really familiar. It has a lot of similarities with LangChain agent. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how Transformers agent works and how it compares with LangChain agent. So this figure describes how Transformers agent works. You have a set of tools like image generator model, image captioner model, text to speech model. Uh, you can see all the model details here, for example, text to speech is using speech T5 model that's hosted on Hugging Face. Now when you give the transformer agent an instruction, read out loud the content of the image, you will feed into a prompt template where your job is to come up with a series of Python commands that will perform the task and you can use the following tools. The agent, which is a large language model, will try to understand the prompt and now determine, okay, now I will use the image captioner to caption the image and use the text to speech to read out loud. And the output of this large language model is the Python syntax because in the prompt, we ask the language model to come up with a series of commands in Python that's why the output is Python code. This Python code get fed into Python interpreter to execute and generate the output. Let's take a look at how exactly it works in code. Let's just open up this collab. First step, we need to install native packages, which is Hugging Face Hub, because a lot of the models are hosted on Hugging Face Hub. And then we need to log in using our Hugging Face Hub API which is free by the way, but you will need to set up API key. We have three options for agents. You can choose star coder, open assistant or open AI. Uh, you can see the models here. The open assistant model is using Pythia model right now, Pythia 12B. And then for open AI models, you will need a open AI API key and you will need to set up billing by the way, this is not free, but if you want to choose the other two options, those are completely free, but OpenAI will give you better results. So we're gonna go with OpenAI. There are two ways to use the agent. One is agent run, one is agent chat. Agent run doesn't keep any of the chat histories. Agent chat keeps chat histories. So here's an example where we ask the agent to generate an image of a boat in the water. And then here you can see the steps. The first step is to understand the ask and decide, okay, I will use the following tool image generator to generate an image according to the prompt. And now the next step is to generate the code. Uh, as you can see here, we're downloading model files to actually execute this model. As a result, we can see we have a boat generated. The next example, can you caption the boat image where the boat image is the boat image we just generated with the variable boat because previously we defined this image as boat. Now our language model decided to use another tool image captioner to generate a caption for the image. And the Python code is this thing. And the answer is a boat floating in the water. Another example, can you generate an image of a boat? Please read out loud the content of the image afterwards. So this is like chaining different models together for this one we use the image generator to generate the image. And then we use image captioner to make a caption for the image. And finally, we use the text reader to generate the audio based on the caption of the image. Uh, even though, as you can see here, the explanation from the agent only mentioned image generator and text reader. It didn't mention the image captioner but the code it actually generated included image captioner. And that's kind of interesting that it was able to generate the code even without the reasoning of needing this code. A wooden boat floating in the water. A wooden boat floating on the water, which is pretty good. This next example is to read out loud the summary of the Hugging Face page. Uh, we can see it's using the text downloader to, to download the text of the web page. And then we use the summarizer function to create a summary of the text. And then we use the text reader to generate the audio of the text. Hugging Face is an AI community building the future. As I mentioned earlier, the first way to use the agent is to do uh, agent.run. The second way is to do agent.chat. Agent.chat keeps 
memory across different runs. So here's an example. We get an image of a capybara using the image generator function. And then we can ask the agent to transform the image so that it snows. Now we're using the image transformer tool to transform the image, which is the image transformer function here. Yeah, you can see the image was changed. We can ask another question, show me a mask of the snowy capybaras. It, it was able to figure out that it needed the image segmenter to create a segmentation mask for the image. And it's using the image segmenter function. If you want to clear all the history and start from scratch, just do agent.prepare for new chat and it will clear out everything. So as a reminder, transformer agents was able to use all of the tools listed here. For example, when we create a caption of the image, we're using the blimp model. When we created the audio from the text, we're using speech T5 model and so on. So those are the tools that's currently supported. As you can see, a lot of the models here are designed for specific use cases, which makes the model more accurate and make the process easy to do. For example, you can do text classification using large language models with certain prompt engineering. But with this approach, we can simply use BART to do the text classification and it's easier. You don't need to do any prompt engineering for a specific task anymore. You just call the model that does a specific task. And also those tools gives more capabilities to the language, large language model that they can do them alone. For example, speech T5 allow us to convert text to speech and large language model can't do that. So the last section about this document is creating new tools, which is pretty straightforward. I think they're using the cat as a service API, which I didn't know before to get random cats, we created a new class, cat image fetcher, which depends on the super class tool. And then in this class, we just need to make the dunder call method to open the image from the API. We call the tool is actually giving us a random cat image. To use the tool in agent, we define the tool uh, in the list of the additional tools parameter. And then when you run the agent, the agent will be able to use the tool cat fetcher to fetch the image and then use the image captioner to caption it. So as you can see here, we get a cat equals cat fetcher and image captioner to get the caption. And now the result is a cat sitting on the top of a table. Um, in the next section, I want to talk about how is it different or similar from line chain agents? First of all, let's talk about tools. Here are the tools available for transformer agents. You can see majority of them are models and there are some community based tools for specific use cases. If we look at line chain tools, however, and most of them are external APIs, it's not models. So if you want to do Google search, right, you can use large language models to connect with your Google search API and do Google search. There are some other options. You can also execute Python in the Python wrapper tool. Oh yeah, I want to talk about this one. So Lanchain already has hugging face tools, which means it can also load hugging face models. So I think Lanchain can already do uh, a lot of things that transformer agents can do. Take a look at the code. This is a directory of tools for the transformer agents. Each tool is a standalone Python file. And if we take a look at what inside, it's just a class of, uh, of the tool. Oh, the speech to text is actually using the open AI whisper model. That's interesting. You can easily contribute to this directory and add a tool. Similarly, in Langchain, the tools are in this utilities directory. For example, this is the Python wrapper tool. You can see just a few lines of code for you to execute Python code. I think it should be pretty straightforward for either of them to use each other's tools. So, so that's tools. Secondly, I want to talk about agent or maybe prompt to be more accurate is how do agent choose which model to use for this specific task? Here is the prompt that transformer agents are using. Your job is to come up with a series of commands in Python that will perform the task. To help you, I will give you access to a set of tools that you can use. Each tool is a Python function and has description explaining the task it performs. Uh, the input 
it expects and the output it returns. You should first explain which tool you will use to perform the task and for what reason and write the code in Python. And then the prompt gives it a, a set of tools that we looked at. And then uh, it's like providing few shot learning. It gives a few examples for the large language model to learn from. So we have a task, the explanation of what tool to use is the translator tool. And the answer is to use the translator function and also the image QA function uh, and so on. So it gives a few of the answers. And finally, the user defined prompt is added here. This is pretty straightforward. Just give you a list of tools and give you some examples to follow. So for Langchain, however, it's a little bit different. There are four different agent types. Each use a different kinds of uh, framework and tools. The default is to use a React framework to determine which tool to use. And this is based on the React paper, React is short for reasoning and acting, meaning that it, it does not only give an action for what to do, it also gives some thoughts. I guess it's similar to the explanation that transformer agents are using. Yeah, I guess it's similar in that sense. And finally, one of the most different things between transform agents and Langchain agents are the purpose is different. Transform agents seems to have a natural scope right now because it's only for come up with Python commands and executing Python code. Whereas for Langchain, it's not just limited to execute Python. And of course it can execute Python, but it can also do a lot of other things. Uh, Langchain has a much bigger scope for doing pretty much everything. Yeah. So again, transformer agents are still experimental. I am looking forward to see what's going to happen next. Thank you for watching. Bye.